omo yoba e sun mo bi e wa wo tun tun hmm ele ile die o da bi pe nti mo nri is like bi pe buari fair free and fair election ni 2023 sugbe mi so pe omi ni da yoruba lo le si onko o lo si gbogbo sugbon mo ma pe gbogbo boya at election at election o mo ma pe gbogbo boya olorun afun gbogbo ani omi ni ra kuro ninu oko eru sugbe iroyin ti o lo ni mo ni ki mo wa buari ko support ti nunbu gbogbo iroyin e de ti nlo kakiri awon ara isi se ti interview kan ni ana ti mo ni ki mo wa soju mo ma wo ran teyin ti teni omologo tv ke em bo nton lo ke fe ti gbo gbo iroyin ayo ke ma wo gbogbo campaign ti won se ni noti ara nfu mi se elese ma wa yisha anyway won ti ni ke get pvc ni sugbe mi so pe pvc ko lo le soro yoro nigeria tori be get pvc asi o kuro na be di bo fun atiku ili awusa na ni be di bo fun pt nubu fulani na ni to leyin odun kan won ti plan e sile ari lori ahmed lawa to gbe jade nje o to ni to wa ti to eyin odun kan hmm ki ti nubu ba ti pa yin he sentimental lo ma gba be he ati ku na dere hmm e mo gbogbo ton se lori epo yin ati owo na peter obi na de ni omo kekere ni but a o ti nta wo bari edo mi o mo mi so nti mi o bari tori ko ti de gbogbo ona re gbere gbe ti won ni sugba se won o je ko ri joba se to ba se hmm se won o je ko se sa won igi mu awon tiger tiger yi ati gbe awon eh eh kini un body lo mi se won o je ki peter obi se hmm mo fi ni un to le pe ni pe ti won ba le je ka ni omi ni ra ka ri omi ni ra wa gba koni kaluku ma lo koni kaluku pe ki nigeria dojuru ko kaluku si ma ba te lo sugba je sare fun eni royin ton lo o se kan ba mi wo video yi video yi wo o le you need to watch it it is very important you need to watch this video ah Oga, she do. Thank you. He's going to be the successor of President Muhammad Buhari. Yes, we've heard Buhari saying all of this, and it's causing lots of concerns. But I mean, Tinubu himself has not, you know, shown any sign that, uh, you know, he's, he's been wary. affected. He's not wary. Yes, he's at going all. ahead with his campaign. We haven't seen Buhari vi visiting several states with him, but nonetheless, he's going ahead. Yesterday, we saw him in, in Brinengwari in uh, Kaduna State, where Rufai took him to the that epicenter zone. of uh, terrorism yes, and banditry. Yeah, banditry, and of course, he was even given a traditional title position. I I mean, very fantastic outing, saying the right words, which is that if he's elected president, the issues of insecurity will be tackled and Nigerians wouldn't need to be running from one place to the other. Uh, is he saying that the issues of insecurity have not been tackled by the uh, uh, incumbent APC administration? Well, these are the issues because sometimes when they, they communicate from that uh, 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 perspective. Uh, yeah, perspective, you want to wonder if they are not... Uh, you know, the marketing, the the party which is already in power. I mean, the president who is already seated. But well, these are politics, and it's left for us to see whether they are also not s silently sending a, a, a coded message to President Buhari through those kind of utterances at times. But let's go to the uh, uh, campaign now. of uh, Atiku Abubakar. Mm. We have seen him going to Plateau State saying that, look, he's going to uh, uh, ensure that there is peace in Jos. He's also saying that he will help redevelop uh, the solid minerals in uh, 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 Nasarawa State, State and all yeah. of that. Well, PDP has governed the states before. Are the people satisfied with what PDP offered them in the past? There are lots of questions being asked. Why should the people of Plateau and the people of Nasarawa, the Middle Bear people, trust Atiku Abubakar and the PDP, considering that in this same Plateau state, remember when Eradua was uh, in, in power, I mean, there were lots of killings. Uh, General Dan Bazao had to even uh, be fired at some point because of some of those things that had to do with the killings in the state and the outcry was there. Now, why should the people of these two states want to trust a PDP that in the past looked like they didn't really care so much other than getting the votes? Can I think be trusted by people in these two states? Would, wouldn't they be left hanging when he comes to power? Now, if you look at the trajectory of the PDP when it was in power in these two states, because it's currently being governed by the APC, uh, both in the uh, Plateau and uh, Nasarawa, you find out that there's been this debate whether indeed the APC has not performed better than the PDP in these two states because the people claim that uh, the previous administrations didn't act more you know to their benefit but well under this one some are saying that these other governors have done very well but the critical thing here is that Achiku has to resolve the issues in his party 
Because when you see the political big wigs in these states, many of them are still dominant in the APC. But well, there's a movement that's ongoing, like for example, with Ombugado, who is the governorship candidate of the PDP in mm. uh, uh, Nasarawa State. There's a thinking that, well, he may upset the incumbent governor. But I can tell you that the APC keeps saying that, no. I mean, the incumbent governor has performed very well. And there's no how uh, David Ombugado can withstand uh, uh, Governor Abdullah Sule. So as it stands right now, uh, it's a testing period for Atiku Abubakar and the PDP. The PDP has its issues still unsettled. A lot of people are still counting on Atiku Abubakar to see if indeed he can unify his party. Because unless that is done, I mean, most of these people wouldn't want to throw away the governments that they already have and embrace governments that they are not, you know, uh, uh, unsure of. So as it stands right now, the not central geopolitical zone used to be a stronghold of the PDP. Mm. It is left to be seen whether the PDP beginning they, from they, Benue going to can be able to bring them back home. But I can tell you with what we've seen Otom doing in Benue because these three states, Benue, Plateau, and Nasara, they used to always, be one state. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they tend to, in one way or the other, uh, like to move in one way or the other. You know, even when uh, the uh, 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 PDP had lost power to CPC in Nasara said, nonetheless, you could see that some of those elements moved into the APC, and it's left to be seen if they can trust the PDP back to power. But I, it's a very, very difficult situation for Atiku Abubakar and the PDP. Yotia Ayus from this zone, the national chairman of the PDP, with what we've seen happening. And the same thing with and, uh, uh, Abdullahi, uh, Senator Abdullahi, the chairman yes, of APC. He, coming yes, he from comes from Nasarawa. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a zone for both of them. And <laughs> so it will be left for so, these so two like national na chairmen of the two biggest political parties to prove their mettle and see whether indeed uh, they, c they will allow uh, the other political parties like Labour Party that are making an inroad into Benue and Asara said to thrive or not. Hmm. But I can tell you it's a zone that is very, very critical so, so it's to a the determinant on who is going to be the next president of Nigeria. It because gets. after the Northwest geopolitical zone, the next place that you expect votes is it's the Northwest. northwest. Uh, uh, sorry, the north central, mm. or sometimes it moves to the northeast. Mm. So it's a difficult period for yeah. uh, uh, these politicians. Yeah, that's what uh, um, some uh, analysts would call political jingoism. <laughs> but uh, here now, we're looking at the milieu where the campaigns are really situated, domiciled in just states, capitals, and the rest. We're not like maybe in the Second Republic, seeing presidential campaigns going to the nook and crannies, you know, of each state and the rest. Why this? Is it paucity of funds? Is it a time factor? You know, we're not seeing them in uh, local uh, governments and uh, areas. Why? This trend actually started from about 2007 mm -hmm. uh, because of the insecurity that we're having in different states. Most of the campaign stops will actually be at the state capitals. But like you pointed out clearly, it didn't used to be so. In the First Republic and Second Republic, we could see, mm -hmm. you know, presidential campaign teams moving from, you know, one state to another using different local governments. governments yeah. And while they are traveling, they will stop by, you know, mm -hmm. at border communities. You know, people will have a feel and see the presidential candidate. But nowadays, people don't see the presidential candidates to even touch or to see them directly. Even when they are the campaign grounds in the state capitals, you see that security operatives are everywhere. Look, we need a president that relates with the people, that the people can touch, people can snap pictures with, people can feel, people can see around and say, look, why should I vote you? And then the person will tell you directly. But when you have the big presidential candidates being surrounded uh, by the security operatives and then... Uh, you know, the campaigns being stopped at the convention grounds only. You know, you are not seeing that personal touch, like a presidential candidate stopping by at the house of a, a voter a and saying, yeah. not even a prominent, a prominent person, a just, voter. Yeah. I mean, just on the way and say, look, I want to be your president. Elect me. This is what I will do for you and all of that. But, I mean, it's a big challenge. It's a, it's because a... of the insecurity, we've not been able to achieve majority of that. Uh, but lastly, one thing I want to say th is that because of the transportation networks, that have filled us over the years. The it's been pretty difficult for Nigerians to be able to know themselves very well. Uh, like in the past, you see, even in trains in those years, political parties will be conducting campaigns inside trains and all of that, moving and spending the night, you know, all through. But because of these issues, 
of course, we are unable to achieve that, and it's a bad aspect of our political uh, uh, culture, development, development and culture. We need to redevelop that. People need to see their potential well, some, candidates. Some, some uh, political that. analysts may want to tell you some now that it's uh, the era of uh, digitization. So why? Now, apart uh, from that, why, there's no, big no, manism I mean, culture. No, some of the presidential well, candidates seem that they will adduce. They will adduce different. Of, they have uh, this sort of monarchical complex. Okay. Uh, they don't want you know to be seen with the talakawa. Yeah. As, yeah, as they call it. Yeah, the, poli <laughs> yeah, the yeah. politics editor. Yeah, they want the vote, but, but, but they don't want people to be close to them. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Very quickly before we go, Sobna, you know, and briefly to 18 presidential candidates and less than a third of them are visible. What is going on? Christian, the solution is for us to just get back to a situation where we have about don't, five, don't suggest, about don't five to eight political party parties. Systemic. No, about five to eight political parties. Because it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a game of the absurdities. If we have about 80 political parties and people are holding tickets which are trust, I mean, a ticket is like, uh, I mean, the broadcast license that we have to operate. It's on behalf of the people. The people. You should not be given... Uh, uh, that recognition as a presidential candidate and not be seen to be acting. Mm. And you're just going around within maybe city center Abuja or Lagos and claiming to be a presidential candidate. INEC needs to monitor what is going on with the uh, uh, with what some analysts will call fringe political parties. People should not be registered uh, uh, some uh, of them should just go and contest the local government elections. It, but, you know, in yes, Nigeria... I mean, we practice multi-party democracy. Yeah. Everybody must be given the opportunity. But INEC must have a situation whereby they a monitor monitoring. those who have been, you know, active given, on the political yes, scene. Yes or no, because you can't just take a party's recognition and then take the candidacy of the party and then just go and sleep in your home or hold it inside your briefcase and be walking around and showing people portfolio, the, the, yeah, I mean, portfolio showing politicians. Showing the people the certificate of return as a candidate. No, portfolio no, no, politicians. No, no. I we'll probably will be, we'll political probably political will be waiting more. for you in 2027. 20, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> well, All right, so.